one thing that I was advised about when using the CHDK on a larger memory card that I was talking about previously, the same user who told me about it before also told me to press the play button to switch it on. It goes straight into playback mode with the lens retracted, which will be a lot quicker than waiting for your lens to retract. So I'm just going to set off my CHDK. And all I want to do is talk about setting up overrides for shutter speed, aperture and ISO because these are sort of some of the functions that are really important to a lot of people that are using the hack. So if we just go into our hack menu and we're going to go into extra photo operations. Now the first thing is the shutter speed. Now with everything that you're using in the hack you'll have the amount that you want it to be at and then the value factor and the value factor is what switches on that override so at the moment we're looking at the override shutter speed value everything is done in seconds saying is that it's going to be a shutter speed of one second now as with any shutter speed that can go down to a fraction of a second as you want a fast shutter but the amazing thing about this is that you can actually put your shutter speed to thousands of seconds so the highest you can put your shutter speed at is 2048 seconds which is about 34 minutes so that's a really long shutter speed um, and then when we go into value factor we can either have it switched off so we don't have the override or you times it by one the number that's here is always timesing what you're going to use so you're basically saying you want one lot of 2048 seconds so you ba that's basically the shutter speed that you've picked so yeah you can go up to a 34 second shutter speed which is pretty intense the next one is our aperture value now the highest one it will do is 16 aperture actually goes higher than that number wise it's only offering up to 16 on the hack and the lowest is 2.7 that this one you don't need a trigger whereas on the shutter speed you needed to set the value factor this has got an off option on it which means that to, to switch off the override you just go to off and if you want to override it you just pick to what amount so you can override the aperture value this is quite good if you want to use your lens zoomed out and you want to keep your aperture low you can force your aperture to stay at 2.7 even though your lens is zoomed out but that's how you trigger that one you've got your ISO here Without the hack, the camera will only yet let you do a 15 second shutter speed with 100 ISO, which isn't really that high. So where we can override the ISO comes in really handy if you want to do night shots. If we set the ISO to 50, remember we've got our value factor, so if we switch it to 1, our ISO will be set to 50. However, if we put this up, we're now doing 10 times 50, which is 500. The highest it will go is 800 which when we times it by one it's fine and 800 ISO isn't overly excessive however when you times up by 10 it becomes 8000 and that ISO is ridiculous you would have so much grain I don't even think anyone would ever use an ISO that high so obviously you can get a really high ISO depending on what you want to achieve from your picture and what I was mentioning earlier you can times these amounts by 100 which means that you can actually keep this quite low if you want to set your ISO to something like 300 set the ISO value to 3 times it by 100 with a value factor and you've got 300 and then obviously you can go to 400, 500 just with one click so it's usually easier to keep it times by 100 so it's a quicker way to change your numbers one last thing I wanted to mention was the the override of the subject distance value now this is basically how far away the camera will try and focus and as you can see the measurement is in millimeters so obviously this number can get quite high but the only reason I've ever actually needed for overriding this is when I've been doing pictures of the night sky you don't even have to worry about changing this distance value if you just go to the value factor and put it on infinity it changes the distance value to infinity and it never tries to focus on one specific thing this was really good when I was leaving my camera taking pictures over a certain amount of time it wasn't changing the focus to something else it was just focusing on everything that it could it wasn't 
specifically focusing on one area and that meant that all of the sky that it could see was in focus and it came out really well so it doesn't bother with background blur or anything it just keeps everything in focus that it can so those are some overrides that might be worth knowing if you want to start getting used to the Canon Hat development kit Before I start talking about more CHDK stuff, I just wanted to show you this. It's the um, lens pen. It's a really good cleaning tool. Uh, on one end, it's got this sort of sponge thing going on, and it's really good at clearing out smearing. And um, when you get like drops of rain and things on the end, it really gets rid of them quite quickly, very efficiently. And then on the other end, you push up this, and you've got a brush, which is really good for getting rid of dust particles and everything like that. 